guys, it's Gretchen and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I am going to be doing an update on one of my Pearsons. I thought I'd do an update just because a lot of people ask me about this particular Pearson, either because they themselves want to get it or because they know that I am kind of sensitive to certain metals. So my body doesn't always react well to initial Pearson jewelry. But today's video is all about my Rook Pearson one year after I got it done. Now I will say it's been a little bit of time since I actually got it done. I got it done March 25th, 2018. So it is like a year plus two months. So, oops. But I thought it was still poignant that I could do an update, right? I did a video before regarding like my pain levels for my Pearsons. I believe I ranked my Rook at a six out of 10. And the only reason why I ranked it that high is because it is such a tight space in there that because I've got, I don't know, like the anatomy of my ear is a little bit closer together. The piercer did have a little bit of a struggle to kind of maneuver in there, but I feel like that's just the Rook in general, just how it's laid out is a little bit more difficult to maneuver. Um, so that's the only reason why I'm giving it, you know, a six out of 10 is just because it was a lot of like, like pushing around and, and finagling it to actually go in the spot we wanted. Healing wise, I believe I also said in that video that it was a five out of 10. You know, it wasn't the worst one to heal. I definitely think it is fully healed by now. I just spit everywhere. Gross. I definitely think that it is fully healed by now. You know, some cartilage piercings minimum can take like three months. Some can take a year plus. I'd say this one was roughly at the nine month mark by the time that it was truly healed and not giving me too many problems. It would still get crusties, but it wasn't like full fledged like bumps and, and, and you know, the occasional infection or like even a keloid forming. It, it was just, it would get crusties every now and then. With that said though, I will say that I am prone to get in piercing bumps, like I said, because of certain jewelry metals. So there is a video where I changed my Rook out for the first time and a lot of people fussed at me. They're like, oh my God, you're changing it too soon. Wonder it's bleeding, you're irritating it. Yes, I know. I know these things. I'm not a moron. I know these things. But I also know how my body is and I know that certain metals, especially initial jewelry metals, that are typically chosen by the piercer. Wow, that was a convoluted sentence. I know that that metal, unless I specifically say, hey, I wanna pay extra for titanium, I know it's not gonna react well with my body. So that's why I changed it out way earlier than I probably should have. I think I waited three months before I changed it out, but it still was way too early for me because it was not in any stretch of the imagination healed. With that being said, because I got it done in March of 2018, I would say everything wasn't 110% cleared up until January of this year, so January 2019. So roughly 10 months after I got it done. I don't know why, I don't know if it was ir just constantly irritated or, or what I was doing, but I did finally like just be like, all right, this bump will not go away. I've got to like put all my focus into it. I've got to make sure that I'm doing everything I can because this bump is obnoxious. And if you've ever had a Pearson bump before, you know that they can be pretty painful. Like, especially if the jewelry sits on it or like if you bump it, it can be a pretty painful thing. Now, is it painful enough for you to like cry and moan and groan? No, it's just one of those things where it's like, I'm trying to feel, make sure there is no bump there, but it's not. See, I can pull on it now and it's, it's, no big, but it, it's one of those things where you just want to get rid of it. You just want to be done with it because it's also, it doesn't look good. You, you don't want people to look at how everything is situated and then be like, wow, she's got a bump on her piercing. She obviously doesn't take care of it. Cause I was just not to the extent that it needed me to. So what are the ways that I got rid of my bump? No, I did not poke it like I did with my daith da Pearson. I'm going to continue to say both ways. Don't anyone try and freaking correct me. So there were three methods that I used to make sure that my Pearson bump went away. Number one, H2Ocean. Tried and true H2Ocean twice a day. 
just clean the site. Number two, this microbial soap by Provon. I actually remembered to bring it into my filming room this time so that you all could see it, but that's what it looks like. This stuff, I swear, is a miracle worker. So if you yourself have a Pearson bump, I will leave the link for this in the description below. I got it on Amazon. So what I did was I used this, I put it on a Q-tip, wet it up, cleaned around the Brooke Pearson site once a day for an, a week, roughly a week, gone. After that, never came back. This stuff is a miracle worker. And then the other thing that I would do is good old tea tree oil. I would take some of this, I would dilute it, and how I did that, probably not like the best method, is I would take a Q-tip again, dip it in here, and then just kind of run some water on it, which makes it not as potent because it can irritate the crap out of you if you just put straight tea tree oil on a site. What I would do is I would clean the site in the evening with the soap and I would take a little bit of the tea tree oil afterwards and just dab it on there and that's it. And so I did that for a week straight, once a day, and it was gone and it has not come back since. So with all that said, it doesn't hurt anymore. I can pull on it. There is no bump. I've checked both sides. It's, it's, it's fine now. That also being said, I still have difficulty changing it. And that's primarily because it's really hard to see the under part, so the bottom part of the ear. I have a difficult time seeing and guiding the jewelry, but it's nowhere near as difficult as this, this lovely Dave Duh Pearson over here, which I refuse to change on my own. But that's not what this video is about. The video is about the Brooke Pearson. So I'll zoom y'all in so you can see what it looks like. I've been fiddling with it this video, so it's probably red. Don't anyone say anything to me. As you can see, it is perfectly fine now. I can pull on it. No big, there's just, there's no bump. It's good to go. My Rook Pearson is definitely one that I don't worry about anymore. A lot of people ask me if I still clean my Pearsons after they've healed. I do, just not as vigorously and as, you know, scheduled as I did when they were healing. But yeah, every, every few days I'll take a Q-tip in there with some H2 Ocean and just clean around it. And if I notice a bump, ever try and come back, I'll take the microbial soap um, and just kind of clean around the site and that usually takes care of it. Let me know in the comments below like how your Brooke Pearson did. I know some people said it was like super easy for them. Like for me, my conch was probably one of my easiest, but I hear a lot of people say it wasn't for them. So let me know in the comments below how your Brooke was. Mine was kind of like in the middle of my other Pearsons. Not the worst, but also not the greatest, so. Let me know how yours went for you. But that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big ol' thumbs up. Go on down there and hit that subscribe button, wherever it may be, because I don't know. Even though I do, this is just my shtick now. Also hit that notification bell in case you want to know when I upload, and in case YouTube wants to let you know when I upload, because I would really appreciate it. And until next time, bye guys.